Hi everyone and welcome to Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance and restorations. Please subscribe to our channel, watch the entire video and of course click on notifications to be first to learn about new videos. I'm Chris Capradoni and in this how-to video I'm going to walk you through how to replace the rotors and pads including the front wear pad sensor on a BMW X5. This job is becoming very expensive at dealerships or even your local mechanic. So since I've been doing this particular job for many years, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to do it, including the necessary tools. Front weight brake pads and rotors uh, provide about 75% of the stopping power of most vehicles. So it's very important to replace them when necessary. So let's get started. So in order to do the brake work on the front or in the, on the back of uh, any vehicle, the first step is to uh, locate the brake master cylinder because you're going to want to take the cap off so that you can relieve some pressure when you compress the uh, calipers in to put in new pads. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to compress them back. So in the X5, it's located under this cowling. There are four plastic 13 millimeter bolts holding this cowling down and the master cylinder is right there. So what I need to do is I need to remove this so that I can access the, the lid. What you do is you just turn these a quarter turn. There's four of them. You just lift it out. This one has some water in it. Let it drain. And you just carefully lift it out. Here's the master cylinder. So what I want to do is take the lid off so that I can add it. I can take the pressure off the system and also add fluid if I need to. So the next step now is to get the wheels off and lift it up. I'm going to be lifting the vehicle using the central jack point, which is um, a part that's attached to the subframe underneath the engine. I'm gonna put the jack stand there so that I can lift both front wheels at the same time. What that'll allow me to do is rotate the wheels um, on either side when I'm working on it so that I can have easier access to the caliper um, bolts behind it. Okay, the vehicle's been lifted up using the central jacking point and I also have um, this, this stand here as additional safety. The next step is to uh, remove this retaining clip, which is used, with, here's a new one, to, it's used to hold the, um, the pads in place. It's an additional safety feature that BMW developed. And it's, it's spring operated. These two uh, arms here hold against the, um, the caliper. And what you need to do is get a flathead screwdriver and you need to pry it in here and put some pressure this way and it should come out. If it doesn't, you just keep massaging it until it clips it, comes out. They are um, a little annoying to remove and install, but given the fact that if you apply the pressure here, you should be able to release it. So the next step is to access the pads. And in order to do that, you have to remove the caliper. Not the caliper bracket yet, but the caliper. So what I'm going to do is so that I have better access to the 7 millimeter, millimeter Allen bolts at the back holding the caliper in place, I'm just going to rotate the rotor. And they're located in these protected uh, rubber cups. You just remove the caps. And then you turn counterclockwise in order to to release them.
Okay, I just removed the caliper and I've just temporarily supported it here. I'm gonna have to zip tie it up here to get it out of the way so that I don't put, for two reasons, I don't put any pressure on the hose, the hydraulic fluid hose. As well, it'll allow me to gain access to the two bolts holding um, th the caliper bracket in place. I need to remove that in order to remove the rotor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie this out of the way. I've inspected the, the pads. They aren't in great shape, so I'm glad I'm replacing them. The wear pad sensor is not on the passenger side. There's only one on the driver's side. In the rear, it's on the passenger side. So there's only one per axle, and I'll be replacing that on the other side of the vehicle when I get to it. The next step is to remove the caliper mounting bracket. And what you need is a, T, or an, a Torx bit. It's an E18 bit, and there are two bolts, one here and one here. Once you remove them, you'll be able to remove the caliper bracket and then gain access to removing the, um, the rotor. Now the caliper black bracket is out of the way, it's time to remove the rotor. But in order to do that, there is a six millimeter Allen bolt, retaining bolt, holding the rotor in place. So you need to um, remove that. I've already put some WD-40 because it was a little stiff. And it's just a matter of taking out this stubby bolt. Now, we should be able to remove um, the rotor. This one is a little stiff, so it might require a little bit of coaxing with a rubber mallet um, on the opposite side, which I'll do. Okay, so after a little convincing with my friend here to remove the old rotor, it had rusted um, to the hub, a surface rust. So uh, I was able to get it off without, you know, with about two or three minutes worth of pounding uh, on this side as I'm rotating it to, to shake it loose. Now the next step is to, ro to install the new rotor. And here it is. Line it up with the retaining bolt. Like that. And install the retaining bolt. And do it snug, but not over tighten. You don't want to strip it. Here we go. So the new rotor is in place. The next step is to reinstall the caliper bracket and then get to the caliper and the pads. Okay, I just reinstalled the uh, caliper mounting bracket with the two Torx bolts. Now, I wanted to mention something about this new rotor I'm putting in place. This has been electroplated, and the reason I chose an electroplated one was I wanted uh, rust protection on the part that surrounds the hub and the outer vented edge of the rotor so that it doesn't rust. Um, in the winter in the area I drive this vehicle, they do use road salt, and that does corrode. So I want to try and maintain the look of it for as long as possible. Moving on, so I unstrapped the caliper. I need to remove the old pads. Okay. 
And the next step is for me to use a clamp in order to compress the piston back into place. That's why I released uh, and uh, took off the cap on the master cylinder to allow me to not have too much pressure when I'm trying to compress this back in place because as it stands right now, I do not have enough caliper space to install the new pads and the new rotor because both have lost um, material and that's why the caliper has been depressed this much in order to keep it in contact. I need to reset it. Good idea is to use an old pad. And it's kind of, there we go, put it like that. And I just keep going until it's totally reset back to here. There, I've hit its limit. Take that out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little um, cleaning with my wire brush. Then I'm going to get it ready to install the new pads. Okay, cleaned up the inside of the caliper. There was some surface rust and carbon. I want a nice clean uh, area so there's no uh, problems with the free movement of the pads. So what I ended up getting was um, ceramic pads. I prefer ceramic pads over semi-metallic or organic um, for a couple of reasons. One, they uh, create the least amount of brake dust they um, heat up the least amount, they make the least amount of noise, um, and I find that just overall they're a better product. They are the most expensive, but um, I think you'll, uh, I've always been satisfied with ceramic and I think you will be too. Don't go for any sort of uh, cost cutting, go for a good quality um, ceramic. So this one here is the one with the three clips and those clip inside the piston. So this one goes here and you just kind of carefully massage it into place like that. Then the other one, it's got a flat back. That one goes over here. Before I do that, um, I'm going to apply a little bit of grease. Um, these pads didn't come with uh, grease. So what I'm using is heat resistant um, anti-seize um, on the back side here. This will allow it to um, float properly and also reduce any additional noise from metal on metal contact when you're when you're breaking as as the pad ages. Just a little trick, put that in place like that. Now the next step is to install it into the caliper bracket and then tighten down the two retaining bolts that have the seven millimeter Allen. So I'll get set up and do that. Okay, I just finished installing the two, the two seven millimeter Allen bolts holding in the caliper. So the job is pretty much complete. I still need to put in this retaining clip, which I'll do right now. What you do is see these two hooks. You line it up on one like this, and then you, with, you start applying some pressure like this and pull, push this one over and you snap it in place. There we go. It requires a little bit of muscle. Now the next step would be to pump the brakes 
so that I could what they call marry the new pads to the new rotor. But since I still have to do the other side, and I'm going to reserve doing that right now. I'll do it after I finish the other side. It should be noted that as you compress the second front caliper to allow for the new thicker pads to fit, you should continually monitor the brake fluid level. It will begin to rise and in some cases like this one, it will reach the top. In order to prevent an overflow and a mess down the firewall and ground, a trick I use is to get a syringe and a cup and extract excess fluid. It may be necessary to perform this process at several stages of the caliper's compression. Once done, any excess fluid should be environmentally disposed of and not saved to be used again. Okay, now I'm working uh, through the driver's side. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have the um, wear pad sensor. This one here is the old one that I just disconnected um, from the caliper. I have a new one. What you do is you feed it through the through the slot here and attach it to the pad with the, with the clips and making sure that the bump the bumpy end is facing towards the rotor so it'll just slide in like that and then what you do is you just um, reroute it the same way that you did that the old one is and it goes right to this box here and that's where you connect it so um, I'm going to start setting it up on this end and then I'll, I'll show how I, I work it through. Okay, I've reached a point where now I'm ready to uh, wire in the new sensor. So it's connected to the pad. And what I'm going to do is just as I disconnect the old one from one of the points, one of the several points, I'm just going to connect the new one. So here's the first point outside of the caliper. Okay, here's the next one. Just snaps down in place. Okay, the next one is behind. Next one is over here. And the last one's in this little box. place put it back in the box and that's the rewiring complete thanks everyone for watching this tutorial on how to replace the front rotors brake pads, and front brake pad wear sensor on a BMW X5. It is not an extremely complicated process, and by doing it yourself, you will be able to spend your money on quality parts and not labor that a mechanic would charge you. Remember, do not damage any brake fluid hoses and ensure 
you torque your lug bolts to the required torque specification. In this case, it is 105 pound-feet of torque. To be safe, perform the torquing twice to ensure you have all five bolts per wheel properly torqued. Dispose of any used excess brake fluid environmentally and ensure the vehicle is lifted and secured properly for the entire procedure. If you have any issues, send me a comment. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and select the notification option. Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance, and restorations.